through the years. And that is uh, the fact that oftentimes we have an easier time believing that Jesus has done everything to save us, but we have a harder time believing that he will do everything to get us through this life. No, when we think of this life, we say, oh, it's up to my wise decisions. It's up to my efforts. It's up to me working hard and so forth. And there is some truth to that. But by far, even in this life, in earthly life, in our day-to-day -day living, the key factor is God's grace and his word to us, my grace is sufficient to you, especially when it comes to pain. When it comes to pain, God comes to us and kind of puts his arm around us and says, don't worry, I'm here for you. I'm not going to desert you. I'm not going to give you anything more than you can handle. My, my grace, my love for you, it's enough. Don't worry. I got your back. Because not only is this grace sufficient, but I mentioned there's two truths here. The other truth is my power is made perfect in weakness. God's power is always, quote, perfect, but it really comes out in full bloom when we give it the opportunity to work in our lives, when we quit relying on our power and rely solely on his power. When in our weakness we say we can't do anything, and God says, uh, my power is now made perfect, made complete in your weakness. Paul's weakness was that thorn in the flesh. We don't know what that was, that thorn in the flesh. Uh, down through the centuries, everybody has tried to guess what it was. I think it was some kind of bodily ail ailment, but it was serious enough that Paul prayed three times, Lord, remove it. Now, we can understand that even a small thorn, if, it doesn't if it's not pulled out, you know what it does? You know, it gets infected, it gets all red, it, the skin gets more and more sensitive. That's all you can think about. You can't think about anything else. Or well, you get the picture, it was serious. And you get the inclination that Paul was praying for relief, not so much for his personal relief, but because he thought this was really hindering him in his ministry. This thorn is making it hard for me to minister. If I didn't have this thorn, I could do a much better job. And God said, no. No. Actually, you can do a better job with that thorn. Because when you have that weakness, my power shines forth. When you go and minister to people and they see how weak you are, that you're struggling with whatever this thorn is, they're going to say, wow, there's something beyond Paul, Paul here. This is not just about Paul. This is some power beyond him. And they will be glorified. See, that's God's perspective on your pain. Your pain is his opportunity to make you strong. Your pain is his opportunity to display his power. We see that throughout the Bible. Think of Moses. Remember Moses, 40 years old, he's a prince of Egypt. He's ready to conquer the world. He's ready to rescue his, his people of Israel. He said, let's do it. And God said, oh no. Oh no, you're relying on all your strength. You're not ready. You're going to fail. So what did God do? He sent him into the wilderness 40 years. Now he's an 80-year-old man. And God says, now you're ready, Moses. And Moses says, no way. I can't do this. And God says, yes, you can. Because my power is made perfect in weakness. And God used Moses to bring the children of Israel out of Egypt. Or take King David. King David, you know, his life is a roller coaster, up and down, as it's a perfect example of this principle. Because when he was on his heights, like when he conquered and killed Goliath, <laughs> he wasn't relying on his strength at all. You know, he goes there and says, the Lord is my strength. You know, whenever he had a high point, he's realizing how weak he is and lets the Lord work. But then when he hits those low points in his life, it's always because he's relying on his power, on his strength. And then the Lord couldn't work. Throughout the Bible, we see the principle that when we are weak, then we are strong. So much so that, what did God do? He's the one that sent the thorn. He's the one that sent the thorn. He says, I got to do this to make you stronger. But we don't have to just look at the Bible. You know, look around you. 
Better yet, look in your own mirror. Look at your own life. When were you closest to God? When did you pray the most fervently? When did you scour the Bible for promises of comfort? When did you were focused on what the Lord could do? Was it during good times or bad times? We know, right? Good times, we don't do that that often. But when things are going bad, when I'm struggling with a problem, when I have a sickness, when I have a loved one who's on death's door, whatever it might be, when I'm in pain, oh, that's when we look to the Lord. But not only are we looking to the Lord, think of the times in your life when people remarked about your faith. I bet you it's usually when you were undergoing suffering. When, when maybe a loved one died and they say, how can you be accepting that death with such peace and calm? Or when you're struggling with a bunch of bills that are piled high and you say, I know, I don't know how, but I trust that the Lord will provide. They're going to say, how can you do that? Or if you have chronic pain or something, and you endure it, not with complaints, but with a smile, with the knowledge that God will provide. You know, often people remark about our faith is when we are reacting to suffering, because why? When we are, when we are in pain, when we are in suffering, we are weak. And when we are weak, what does Paul say? We are strong. That is God's perspective on pain. And that's why when the Lord answered Paul's... By the way, notice that God did give Paul an answer to his prayer. It was a no. So many people say, God didn't answer my prayer. I said, yes, he did. He said, no. Paul, the Lord said, no. And Paul didn't sit there and say, oh. And he resigned himself to him. I guess I got to answer. You know, he wasn't filled with bitterness. No. Again, listen again to what Paul, how Paul reacted. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses and insults and hardships and persecution and difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. I don't know about you, but I don't know if I can get to the point of delighting in pain like Paul did. But you know what? I don't think Paul thought he could either. I Probably before he wrote this, before he got the thorn in the flesh, if somebody was to say that, he said, there's no way. See, that's how God works. God often gives us that during the crisis and not before the crisis. I, I, I always marvel at the early Christian martyrs who could be thrown to the lions to this horrible death, and they're singing praises to God. I said, how could they ever do that? More than likely, they were scratching their heads too and say, how, do, how are we doing this? You know, weeks before when they maybe saw their neighbors going through this, they said, no way. But see, that is how God works. It's when we are weak. Not before we're weak, but when we are weak. That's when he will give us that tremendous peace. That tremendous comfort. That tremendous power. So that we will be strong. You know, God loves you as much as he loves St. Paul. God loves you as much as he loved those early Christian martyrs. God wants to do the same thing with you. God's word that his grace is sufficient for you, not just for eternal life, but also in this life, that applies to you. God's statement that my power is made perfect in weakness, and your weakness applies to you. Friends, believe that. In your pain, cling to that. In your pain, delight in that. For when you are weak, then you are strong. And don't ever forget that because of the pain our Savior experienced, a painless eternity is awaiting you in heaven. To God, to our glorious God, be all glory. Amen.
Let's respond to this message by seeing you are my all in all.